Is it true that at age 14 you kill someone? I ain't kill nobody, but yeah, we kill somebody. Uh, in the state of Texas, if one person pulled the trigger, all four of y'all did it. Yeah. Uh, morally, morally and ethically, if you participate in something and it's wrong, so, you've done wrong. So what was so it like at the time knowing that all four of you, whomever, had shot and killed someone? What was that when you th at the time when you thought about it after it was done? What was it like for you to reflect on that as a 14-year-old? Uh, uh, it was funny. It was funny? Yeah, it, yeah, it was funny. Uh, when If I got a toothache and I got a real bad toothache, I don't care about your headache. So our kid, I'm in pain as a kid. I can't tell you why I'm in pain, but man, I'm, I'm, I'm in pain. And so my, my pain have evolved into to anger. So I got displaced anger. Uh, we didn't have no, no remorse for what we did when we done it. We don't understand what we did. Yeah. A 14 year old don't understand. They, they know they done something wrong. They know they killed somebody, but to understand the, the ramifications and, and the reasoning, there's, there's no way a kid can do that. So, so when you were hurt someone, did it ease your pain? No, uh, hurt people hurt people, but hurting people don't take away your hurt. You just hurt other people. Uh, no, nah, it, it don't. You're, you're, as a kid, you can't process this. You're, 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 you're trying to ask logical questions f for a kid to give answers to an adult when the brain process, all the medical, all the data, all the science and research that we have in this country says the human brain does not develop to at or around age 25. That's why the insurance rates don't go down to after 25. So they got this information. So when you got a kid that then grew up in a single parent home, just take me for instance, I've never been abused, hadn't been molested, never seen my mama get beat up, didn't grow up in a violent neighborhood, <laughs> my mother wasn't on drugs, so I just grew up without a father. Yeah. Right? But I had a loving mother who instilled right and wrong, morals and values, but she had to go to work. And she provided a great home life for us, right? But she had to go to work. So when I was getting out of school, my mother was going to work. What does that leave me? No parental supervision. We got all the food in the house. So my mother saying, leave your homework out. When I come home, I'm checking your homework. I'm calling at such and such time. So we knew what time my mother breaks were. I got an older brother who a couple years older than me. Oh, they're gonna get in trouble. Boys are gonna be boys. Kids are gonna be kids. Teenagers are gonna be teenagers. The element of all of this is not the single mother. It's the village. It don't take a mother and a father to raise a child. It takes a village to raise a child. So when we you keep saying, what about the mother and the father? What about the village? How long were you in juvenile? I spent right at seven years from the age 14 to 21. Best time of my life. And, and when you were there, did they, how long were you supposed, the sentence was for how long? I got 12 years. Oh, okay. I received a 12-year I re, I sentence. I was facing 40 years. And when you say it was the best time of your life, what do you mean by that? Uh, best time of my life. It was like growing up in, in, inside of a perfect two-parent home. Uh, during the time of my during the time of my 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 incarceration, I became one of the first children uh, in Tarrant County in Fort Worth, Texas, to be tried and adjudicated for the crime of murder. Most people don't know that when a child get in trouble, they're not in criminal court. I don't care if they kill ten people. A child commits murder. And juvenile court is family court. So there's a difference between family court and criminal court. I went into a family court with a murder case. You can't convict a child. Children are adjudicated unless they stand trial to be tried as an adult during a certification hearing where they transfer into the adult system. So I remained in the juvenile system, right? When I went there, we had a governor by the name of Ann Richards. Ann Richards was a recovering, recovering 
alcoholic drug addict. <laughs> had a lot of focus on uh, rehabilitation and re-socialization. So I went into a, 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 a culture that was built around this. These three psychiatrists and psychologists had built this, this program called Positive Peer Culture. And so they created this culture of a positive peer culture. And it was formed around re-socializing children and repairing children. And they had psychotherapy drama where we reenacted our crimes. That juvenile facility gave me all the skills and the tools necessary for me to come out here and be successful. Oh, good, man. I didn't, so uh, Ann Richard, was she, she had a drug problem too or just an alcohol yeah, problem? She, she was a recovering, she was a recovering alcoholic and I, I, I believe prescription pills. So oh, don't quote me on that, but I know for a fact she was a recovering alcoholic. I used to, um, I used to work, her daughter, Cecilia, was my boss at one time when I worked for the union. So I know who you're talking about, but I didn't know that about Ann. Um, yeah, so, so she had a lot of, she had a lot of heart, man, for, for building programs, man. So uh, the program that I was in had a capital offender program uh, that helped us get in touch with, with, with victim empathy. Uh, we were considered the, the, the worst, we, we were the first generation of children in the state of Texas who began committing these murders. I'm the super predator generation, right? I'm the, we, we're the first generation of kids outside of California, Chicago, New York, and Philadelphia where children were committing murder. So this was in the late 80s, early 90s, where they said, hey, we got a wave of black children that's going to be born and they're going to be super predators. They're going to be bigger. They're going to be faster. They're going to be stronger. They're going to be heartless and they're going to be incorrigible. That's what your Democratic leadership said. They're yeah. going to be incorrigible. And the word incorrigible said that we weren't going to be able to change. So when they made that statement, when Joe Biden had made that statement and Hillary Clinton had made that statement, it sent a shockwave of fear through America. And so they started making laws, tougher laws, tough on juvenile crime. So they started sentencing 13 year olds, 14 year olds in this country, giving them life without parole, with no possibility of ever getting out of prison for things that they was doing at age 12 and 13 and 14 years old. So I fell in that first group of children. It's just that I had a governor. I went into a juvenile facility where people was working with children who committed some of the most heinous crimes. I'm talking about some of the most heinous crimes in the history of this state. And they still treated us like children. Nice. How were you they, able they to get out like so? Children. How were you able to get out so early, earlier than the sentence? Uh, uh, earlier than the sentence, uh, the state state requirement was you go back to court on your 18th birthday, uh, based on the nature of your crime, uh, you know, based on your behavior while in juvenile custody, uh, and based on the state's recommendation. Uh, the courts had a decision to either parole you home where you would be on parole to your 21st birthday, transfer you to the adult prison system where you finish out the remainder of your sentence or recommit you back into the custody of the state's juvenile uh, system. Uh, I earned a recommendation to go to prison. Remember I told you I joined the gang. Right. I didn't know nothing about gangs before I got to the juvenile facility. Uh, it was just something to do. It was fun. It was something. It seemed appealing. So I spent four years trying to go to prison. I wanted to be a man. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to. Ha I wanted to be a man, right? Yeah, Remember, yeah. I told you I grew up believing. So I had I had my older friends who would write me from prison, making prison sound fun. Uh, so I aspired to go to prison. Amazing. But there was there was some individuals who worked with me uh, on my dorm. Uh, and they worked with me for for quite a amount of time. They they was able to see past the you know the bullshit I was putting on. I was just acting. I wasn't no hardened gang member. Yeah, yeah. I, ain't, I don't know. I ain't. I, don't, I didn't come from hate. I'm, I come from a loving home. I don't know how to hate. Yeah. I can act hate. You see what I'm saying? How uh, old were you when you got out? Uh, I was I was 21. I had just turned 21. So I was from 14 to 21. So when I got out at 21, so I got recommitted. 
uh, back into the to the to the juvenile facility, uh, based on those individuals uh, putting their jobs on the line and come testify on my behalf. And so when you got out, did the world look different to you? Uh, yeah, they had two-story McDonald's and Burger King with the PlayStation <laughs> with the playgrounds on the inside. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the world was totally different. Amazing.